So you took some pictures of the eclipse like these, and now you want to make an HDR or a high dynamic range image out of your data that look kind of like these. The April 8 total solar eclipse is still a few days away from the publishing of this video, but I'm here to help you be prepared to process your pictures as soon as you can. First, I'd like to thank Dr. Gordon Telepin for being kind enough to share his 2017 totality images with me for this video. And if you haven't already checked it out, get his Solar Eclipse Timer app. It's an excellent app, especially if this is your first time experiencing an eclipse. Find a link to the full demo that I did on the app a few months ago in the description below. And get more information on the app on solareclipsetimer.com. Dr. Telepin included an HDR edit of his image in his book called Eclipse Day 2024 and more. And this will be kind of my baseline. And his book is an excellent resource. I would highly recommend it. Link to his website and the book in the description below as well. The rest of the video is broken down into four sections. The first section is manually aligning the six frames that I'll be working with in Photoshop. Then we'll use those aligned frames to create three different types of HDR images of the eclipse. The first method is basic and takes about two minutes. We will then spend a couple of minutes to make that basic a little bit better. For the second method, we'll try out an automated stack followed by a few more minutes of making that better putting my own twist to Russell Preston Brown's video from a few years ago. And if that doesn't satisfy you, then the third method, originally published by Gerald Pellet in 1998 in the Sky and Telescope magazine, is a somewhat more advanced method that can yield you results similar to this. I'm stacking JPEGs and not RAW files, so the full power of my processing steps isn't taken into effect. So taking a look at the images from Dr. Gordon Telepin, I have six JPEGs here. And if we take a look at some of these one by one, we can see that they get brighter and brighter until we get to the very end. And you can kind of see some of the moon's uh, moon surface here uh, from the earth shine. I don't know if I'll be able to tease that out, but we'll take a look. And this is one two thousandth of a second. Let me close this up at Photoshop open already. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on file, scripts, and then load files into stack. And I already have that folder open here. So I'm gonna select all of these, click okay. Do not click on attempt to automatically align source images. Photoshop will not be able to do that. And don't create smart objects after loading layers. Uh, we can save that for later. And now I'll click okay. And this will take a minute or so to uh, insert the images, depending on how many you have, it can take a little, little while. And while it's doing this, I'll mention that you probably noticed that as I was sifting through these, that they are not really aligned. So we're going to align them in Photoshop as the first step. So here, we have all of our images here. So I'll have to hide these and you can see them all. Pretty cool. Alrighty, so we're going to align them and the way I am going to align all of these is first, I'm going to select all of these layers. So select the first one, hold shift, select the bottom one. And I'm gonna change the blending mode to difference. And once you do that if, and you zoom in, you can kind of see that the layers are not really aligned at all. Uh, it looks fine, but if you try to do anything automated with this, it'll look weird. So the way I do this is I will make my top layer my base layer. So this is the one two thousandth of a second and I'll align everything else to this one. So to make it a little bit easier for myself, I take the top layer, I change the opacity to let's say like 60% or something. And then I click on the bottom layer, make sure that's selected. And I can zoom in a little bit and then I'll use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move that around and try and align it. So I'm going down a little bit. Right, I think that looks pretty good. There we go, I can, I can uncheck the first one, you can see that the black moon is not moving. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for layer two and three. So I'm gonna uncheck the first one, check the, or make the third one visible. And then the layer two here, I'm going to change the opacity to 60% to like make it a little bit easier, 64%, it doesn't really matter. And then I'll select layer three, make sure you're selecting layer three. And then I'll use my arrow keys again to move it. So the there we go. There we go. I think that looks good. If I uncheck that, you can see that the moon isn't moving. It's just getting a little bit brighter. Great. So now I can make the fourth layer visible, make the third layer opacity of like 60%, and then select the fourth layer, 
Gonna do this one a little bit faster. You can see that it looks a little bit smaller than the layer above. So what we can do is we'll zoom out. I have show transform, transform controls available here. I click on this so that the height and width is available. And I'm going to change the height and width to 100 point, uh, let's say five. Yeah, that should, that should be more than enough. And then I'll click on this. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's a little bit it's centered and then we can check to see what it looks like. Cool. All right. We'll do the same thing for this one. Change this to 66%, 60%, give or take. Change this one, move it. There we go. It's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to resize it. going to do 101 percent and I think I think this is good enough all right so now the last layer there we go to the last layer I'll move that last layer I think needs to be scaled up a little bit maybe like this I think that looks good. Okay. All right. So now I can select all of these again. I'll select all five, all six layers difference. I'll change to normal. And I can just quickly sift through these. You can see that there was a little bit of a movement, so it's okay. Okay, great. I'll set all of them to 100% opacity. That's done. Now I'm going to, uh, just so I can save my aligned images, aligned layers, because I'll be doing multiples. Uh, you don't have to do this, but if you want to save your layers, you can go to File, Export, Layers to Files here. I'll do New Folder, Aligned, Aligned, and JPEG. Uh, since I'm already working on JPEG, I'm not really going to get any other detail, just click on run, sure. All right, so I have my exported layers here. And if I sift through them, you can see that they are pretty well aligned now. So I'll go back to Photoshop. Uh, I closed up that layer, so I'm gonna open it back up using scripts, load files into stack, browse, open these up, all of them, press okay. Don't select auto align or anything. So we have the layers open. And depending on how many layers you have, it can take a little while. So I have this. I already have my crop tool selected. So I know I might have some artifacts. So I'm just going to crop off the edges. And the method I'm using is just the opacity method where I'm just going to slowly go down in opacity and try and do an HDR imaging that way. So right now they're all set to one. And the blending option is set to normal here. We're not, we don't want to set anything else. The bottom layer will stay at 100%. The next layer up, we're going to change it to, let's say, like 60%. I'm picking that number pretty arbitrarily. You can, you can pick your own. Play with the opacity settings and see what you like. The next one, I'll do 50%. The next one, I will do 40%. Next one, I'll do 30%. And the final one, I'll do 20%. There we go. And there you go. Technically, this is a pretty HDR image uh, compared to what we saw before. This combines all of the layers one by one using the different opacities. And I think it looks pretty good. So we can call this like a level one kind of basic HDR imaging. And for a lot of people, this could be more than enough. I'm just gonna click on this, I'll do save. I'll do save a copy on my computer. I'll do um, basic HDR. Great. 
So if you want like a basic plus image here, what we can do here is, you know, just right click somewhere here and we'll do flatten image. So we have just one layer here and then we can do filter, camera raw filter, and we can make slight adjustments to make this look a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, let's see if we can even do that. First, I'll change the temperature. I'll make it go down a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. I think like negative nine looks pretty good. And that also pops the prominence that we see here. Great. I'll zoom out. I'm going to open up the shadows around the sun, not too much. I'll open up the highlights so it's a little bit brighter. Some contrast, not a lot. And then texture and clarity, I'll up a little bit. And you can see that when I do that, some of the filaments here, some of the coronal filaments, uh, I think they're caused by like magnetic fields or something, become more clear. And if you want to see what it looked like before, click on this toggle visibility eye on the right side here. If you hold it, it'll turn off and you can bring it back and forth. So this is one version and this is like really basic adjustments here. And I'm going to click OK. And I think this is good. I'm going to save this as, save a copy. Basic, I'm going to do basic plus. Great. Now we can look through them one by one. There we go. I think for even more people, like something like this would look amazing as well. So, all right, we have basic, basic plus. Great. So now I'm going to close this. I'm going to reopen my stack. So file, scripts, load files into stack. Take all of those, press OK. The next method may be a little bit easier, so I'm gonna select all of these layers. I'll right click, I'll say convert to smart object. And now we can go to layer, uh, smart objects, stack mode, and then we can do a mean stack, it's similar to what we do with deep sky objects and that created a basic HDR stack of all of the frames there. So I actually like this. It actually looks really nice and it's pretty simple, right? It's just like a line after your line. It's literally just three clicks. So I'm going to save this as so we can compare later. Before I save it, I'm going to crop it a little bit because you can see the stacking artifacts on the sides. There we go. Okay, now, now I can save it as a copy on my computer. We can do a um, smart object HDR. Great. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, what we did with the other one, doing a camera raw. So we'll do filter, camera raw, we'll do our basic adjustments, and then see if we can make it pop a little bit more. So once that opens up, all right, so once that opens, if we zoom out, you can see that the uh, stacking artifacts are still there. And that's because the camera rock can still see all the layers there, but it's okay. I, I don't really care about it right now. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And then I'm gonna open up the shadows again, like last time. Open up some of the highlights a little bit. Increase the contrast a tiny bit. And then we'll do the clarity and texture. So you can see some more of the furriness around the corona. And the one thing I did forget is the temperature check. So we'll go down a little bit. I think I did negative nine in the last one. And there we go. Okay, and we can zoom in, we can see what it looks like. You can see I didn't do the best job of aligning the images, but there we go. So I think this looks pretty good. So I'll do OK. And then I'll save a copy. And then I'll do Smart Object HDR Smart Object Plus. Great. There we go. Alrighty. OK, now we can compare the four of them and then see which one we like the best. So 
this is basic HDR basic plus and then we'll open up H smart object HDR so this is smart object HDR and smart object plus now if we compare this with basic plus you can see the smart object is a little bit brighter it could be because of my camera raw edits but if you go back and forth So these are just two quick ways of getting HDR out of the Eclipse. I will show you for my research, I've come across a couple different ways to get more detail of the texture of the Eclipse. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I closed all my layers and I'm going to do file scripts. I'll load all of my aligned images to stack one more time. So no, no, the six. So I have all of my layers here and the best way to get like extreme detail is to do what I'm about to show you on all of these layers one by one. And on six layers, it's not that bad, but some people will end up stacking dozens of layers and it can be extremely time consuming, but to save time and just to show you the concept, I'm going to do everything in just these layers all in one go. So I'm going to restack these right click first I'll convert to smart object and then go to layer smart objects and then stack and then I'll do a mean stack again this time I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer so that is just one image file now and we can see some of the stacking artifacts here so I'm going to crop down a little bit not too much doesn't really matter there we go press ok ok so now this pretty much looks like what we got out of our basic or our, our smart object HDR image. And we're going to do some stuff to it. So I'm going to save this first. I'm going to save as on my computer. I'm going to call this OG for original. And now I have that. Now I'm going to do a blur onto this. So I'm going to do select filter blur. I'm going to do a radial blur. And what I found works best is around, not, not 62, around nine, nine or 10 works really well. The blur method is spinned and the quality is best. And I'll click okay. And it's gonna take a few seconds to do a blur on the image here. And what that does is it gets rid of the texture of the eclipse here, because we're going to subtract this from our original image to just get the texture or just get the magnetic field lines that we see coming out of the sun. If you've watched my comet stacking video, it's pretty similar to what we did there. But now I'm gonna save this as, I'll just call it blur. Great, now we have our blur open. So now we need to open our OG, press okay. So we have our OG here and now we're going to apply the blurred image onto this and subtract the blur so that we only get the contours and the lines here. So we're going to do, while we're on OG, so we're going to do image, apply image, make sure the source is blur. And instead of multiply, we're going to select subtract. And you can see it looks kind of cool, looks fabric-y, kind of looks like a warping of space time. Uh, it looks, looks pretty nice. Uh, some people I've seen do like 75% opacity but I'm just gonna keep it at 100% and I think I think we can make it work offset 40 we can make it a little bit weirder you, play, you should play with this and see what gives you detail that you like that you want appearing on your final image here and I think this is good I think offset of 50 is good all right I'm gonna press ok all right so now we have this don't override OG we're gonna say file save as and we'll call this one subtracted. Perfect. Now we don't need blur anymore. It has done its job. We'll keep subtracted open and we'll do open our file open. We'll open OG one more time. There we go. And now we're going to apply the subtracted image onto our OG image one more time or for the first time. We'll do image, apply image, make sure the source is subtracted. And instead of subtract, we're going to do multiply. Great. Press OK. And it looks darker, right? If you're thinking like, hey, this looks 
not like the other ones. Why is that? No problem. But if you zoom in, we can see there's more like these lines here. They look a lot sharper. They look a little bit cooler. And we can definitely make the details pop here. And the way I am going to do it is you may have your own methods of making of stretching images, if you will. I'm going to go to filter. I'll do camera raw filter. Once that's open in basic, I'm going to decrease the temperature again. I'm going to do nine just so I can, I'm just keeping it consistent. Oops. And then now I'm going to edit these settings here. So I'll, I'm going to increase the exposure a tiny bit so that it makes it a little, little bit brighter. Increase the contrast a little bit. I'm going to zoom out so it's easier to see. I'm going to open up the shadows, make it highlighty more. the blacks a little bit, increase the whites a little bit. Exposure, that's good. Contrast. Now if you zoom in, you can see that you can see so many more contours, some more, more lines around the sun. And the prominences look a little bit brighter too. But you can see more lines here. And now we're going to play with the clarity a little bit. And the texture. But look at this, you know, like you can see these lines here. They look really cool. And maybe I'll increase the exposure a tiny bit more. I'll do the one. We can see some stacking artifacts. I don't know if it translates into the video, but there's some. And I think it's because of, again, the JPEG nature of this. Increase the highlights more. Contrast more, gonna do more exposure, doing more than I really wanted, but, and, and here, if I do this, you can see the stacking artifacts that you can see. And you can also see the face of the moon, but this is not my focus, so I'm just gonna keep this at like 135, sure. I think this looks okay. Alrighty, I think that looks pretty good, plus okay. So this is before, this is after. We can go to the history. You can see before and after. More lines looks a lot better in my opinion. And if you want, we can add some more adjustments. You can do adjustments there. You can do image adjustments. We can do brightness and contrast, make it a little bit brighter. But again, be careful. If you have artifacts around you, it'll just make those brighter as well. There we go. And then image, some people like doing a levels adjustment. You can do that to bring the white levels down so that it looks a little bit better. Bring the black levels up. Okay, I'm gonna preview. You can see it just looks a little bit, little bit brighter. But again, it does highlight the uh, stacking artifacts. So I'm just gonna pull back a little bit. Alrighty, okay. I think this is good enough. I think I'll just live with the stacking artifacts since uh, you know it's JPEG. And once I get my own raw images, hopefully, I'll be able to redo this, um, get some more detail out of this, and um, yeah, yep, yep. There we go. So now I'll save this. I'll save as final. Call it whatever you want, and then also save a copy as JPEG since we've been working with JPEGs anyway. Okay, now we can go back, compare some of these. So we have our basic plus HDR. We have our smart object plus HDR. So go between these two. They both look okay. Now, if you go back here, we have our final. There we go. So now we can compare this with basic plus and Smart Object Plus. There we go. And if you want, you can even play with this even more, play with the contrast. Uh, you can do a better job of aligning these layers than I did here, but, and if you have raw data, you may end up not getting these stacking artifacts around that we can see here. But again, I hope this demonstrated the concept of how to do HDR images with your Eclipse pictures 
from the very basic to some advanced. And as I said before, there are people who will take a lot of time and do the subtract and multiply methods that I showed you on each of these layers and they can get a ton of detail. So if you have the time, if you don't have like a million layers, you can try this yourself. I hope this video was helpful and I hope to be able to get my own data to process in 2024. And if I get that opportunity, I will document my process and my steps and I will share them with you here. If you take pictures of the upcoming eclipse and you're willing to let me process them on this channel here, let me know. There are a ton of other resources that you can use to learn how to create an HDR eclipse picture. And I wanna try as many of them as possible and see which works best for me. And no matter how hard I try, I don't think I'll ever catch up to Miloslav Druckmuller's level. If you used any of the methods I shared today, I'd love to hear from you and see your final results. Join us on Discord and share your pictures with our small community. Clear skies to us all.